Well, we are here in Riyadh today for the 8th edition of the Future Investment Initiative. Many people are calling it, in a way, Davos in the desert. And joining us today is uh, uh, Eric Garcetti, Ambassador of uh, uh, US to India. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on Times Now. Firstly, what do you have to say about this summit, this event here, the hospitality? You live in India where we live by Atithi Devo Bhava. Did you experience something similar here? Well, nobody can do better than India when it comes to hospitality, but the Saudis are very close. This is a tremendous conference where you really feel not only India's presence in this larger region, but also the opportunities and how dynamic right now this country is. And I came here to speak about the connections between Saudi, India, and the United States. Things like IMEC, the India-Middle East Corridor, which could connect our nations together with a vibrant trade route, communications route, investment opportunities. And I was here also as a cheerleader in the U.S.-India relationship and saying why India is such an important country to be investing in, to be present in, and to be engaged with. You know, with this particular summit, we're also seeing how Saudi Arabia is trying to present itself as a land which uh, has something else to offer apart from oil. What are your key takeaways for India and for the U.S.? There's no question. I mean, you look at the number of Indians that are here. First of all, so there's economic opportunities as doctors, as laborers, as people sending remittances back to India. But also, increasingly, it's IP being shared between Saudi and India, the amazing technology that Indian companies are doing. We had a session this morning looking at the ways that Saudi investments are fueling those companies and vice versa, Indian investments are coming now to Saudi as well. So it's really become a two-way uh, road. And most importantly, in the technology of the future, the theme has been AI. How can we make AI something you know, which helps all people instead of dividing us and harming us? Uh, climate change has also turned out to be a very important issue. We all talk about climate change, and here the focus is infinite solutions. So what is your sense on, you know, uh, how the world should really come together to now really talk about some solutions which are implementable for the entire world to deal with climate change? Because it is a reality. You know, there's 800 million people who are vulnerable in India to climate change, extreme heat. People who lose their lives when they can't afford air conditioning and the heat is unbearable. And here in Saudi, it's even hotter. So we know whether it's from my own hometown of Los Angeles where we see fires or whether it's in the Indian subcontinent where we see floods, this is something that isn't about tomorrow, it's about today. And it's very refreshing to see a country that we thought was just about oil and gas really seeing that in the future it's going to be electric vehicles, solar power, wind, green hydrogen, which I really think Saudi, India, and the U.S. are working on together, that these fuels of the future can give us hope that our children and children's children can survive. When you speak with people here representing various industries, do you think they are ready to take that path of sustainability? Because talks clearly have happened quite a lot. Now is the time to act. If we don't act today, our future is going to be in danger. No question. It makes sense in a green sense for the world and its health, but also a green sense in the sense of money. You know, the, the jobs you can create. I used to be the mayor of Los Angeles, the second largest city. 70% of our new jobs were created through investments in sustainable enterprises, whether it's sustainable energy, whether it's water conservation, whether it's looking at green buildings and transportation. We know that if you're not doing these things, you're losing money. But more importantly, if you're not doing these things, your people are suffering. One last question. Uh, you know, the U.S. election results, a historic moment in American politics, is just days away. What should India be looking forward to? How is the fight to the white race? Well, I think India is going to win no matter what, because whether it's been a Republican or a Democrat in the White House and Congress, we love India, India loves us, and every leader has taken it to a new level. Of course, we also have an Indian-American candidate, so we could see the daughter of an Indian immigrant become the president, but also you have a former president who is very pro-India. So I think India wins no matter what, but there is that tantalizing opportunity. You know, you've been in the UK with an Indian prime minister, Ireland with an Indian prime minister. Uh, perhaps we could have our first Indian-American president, too. Well, whatever happens, it's going to be historic, whether Trump's third term as the president or the first woman president that America will get. It's going to be historic. I said that was going to be my last question, but just one more sure. very quickly. You know, Donald Trump has been quite vocal about tariffs, mm -hmm. specifically, you know, uh, tariffs are imposed in India. And he says if he comes back to power, he's going to reciprocate. How do we see that? 
You know, I think it's so important for us to have fewer barriers between our countries. A lot of my work as ambassadors, how can we set up a trusted technology and trade corridor where we don't put up barriers and you don't put up barriers and our companies can come together to really solve the future together. So without getting political, because I'm a diplomat, hopefully we can see trade expand even more. We're your number one trading partner right now. That's historic. And I would hate to see us go backwards. I think the future is in moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for speaking you. with Thank us. You Thank you. With video journalist Gopal here in Riyadh, Hinagambhir for Times Now.